tonight we're going to do this in two sessions. I have a PowerPoint presentation for the first 15, 20 minutes or so that will go through the what the club success plan is all about and a couple of points to keep in mind. And then the second part of the meeting, what I'd like to do is go through the questions that many of you have sent to me before the, as you signed up and we had over 50 questions and I'm sure they're going to be more that are added to this list and they're really good questions. And so it'll be more interactive in the second part. Feel free to download the handout and you're welcome to use it. This is all information that's taken directly from the Toastmasters materials. So it's all approved. All right, so let's get started. Our club mission, one, two, three. We, we I, I support learning experience. Members are empowered, members are empowered to develop education and leadership skills. skills. Developing in greater self confidence. Small small Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Why did I ask us to read this out loud? What jumps out to you? as you read this club mission. You can type it in the Zoom or you can say it through the audio. Everything that's positive is in. Yes, it's positive. Yep. And confidence is everything we're joining Toastmasters for. Supportive, yes. experience, self-confidence, growth, it's all there. It is, what I'd like to everybody to really focus on is the word learning experience. What Toastmasters is, it is an educational program. And as club presidents, our role is to ensure that we create a quality learning experience so that our members can develop their self-growth, self-confidence and personal growth through the development of their communication leadership skills. Yes, it's great that if we have a good social uh, environment in our club, that's great, but that's not the purpose of Toastmasters. We are entrusted as club presidents to create and perpetuate an educational system. So that's why this concept of the club success plan and the distinguished club program is so important. It's to make sure that we're delivering a quality educational system so why be a distinguished club? Why is this important? What do you see in front of you here? You see the red velvet rope. What does the red velvet rope mean? It is about, it's a barrier, but also what it is, it is a line, it is a standard. So why be a distinguished club. What is a distinguished club? Why are we talking about this? Your role is to create a, an educational environment that meets the standards and that sets the standards so that you can create this supportive and positive learning experience. So keep that in mind as club presidents. Our role is to set and maintain and if necessarily raise the standards so that our members can learn and develop and grow. So when I talk about red velvet rope, that's what it is. It's about the standards. So I like what, I'm gonna interrupt yeah. there. I like what Sue just said, where it shows that we're working on the right things. And I think yes. that's the a thing to highlight as well. Very much, very much. We're showing, and we're creating something that is special. It needs to be special. It needs to stand out. It needs to be, uh, it needs to be of a high standard, and that's what will create the environment where we all learn. So, what makes a distinguished club? And this is taken directly from the uh, distinguished club program manual. And if some of you who may have done this also will recognize the elements of moments of truth. And moments of truth is a powerful tool that you can use. It's a, it's a really good checklist for, to help you make sure that you are keeping those standards high in every element of the club. 
from the first impressions to how you orient your members and how, and how you remind them, uh, teach them and remind them of their responsibilities and their commitments. Of course, the fellowship and the variety, we love the post toasties and those are important, but that's not the reason for having a club. The club has to function well, and then you get to do the post toasties and then you get to do the social stuff because the club is running well. It is not, it is not the, be a, the social is not the purpose of a Toastmasters club. It is about learning and the warm and friendly and supportive environment adds to that learning. And of course, the program planning and meeting organization and making sure that the, the, the agenda of every meeting is fun and packed and challenging and has a rhythm to it that also you have a strong membership in the club who are committed and engaged and they are participating and providing leadership and they are participating in the co committees and they're, they're participating also in progressing their own learning experience. And finally, the achievement recognition that we are recognizing that people are learning and growing and that helps inspire other people too. So I encourage you if you, and I believe this would be a great topic for subsequent club president meetings, the, the concept of moments of truth, but simply go on Google and type Toastmasters moments of truth and you will get the, the handout, you'll get the manual and it's mentioned also in the Distinguished Club Program, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if you can't find it, email me. My email is at the beginning of the uh, presentation and, uh, or talk to your area director. They, they will definitely help you find it. What I've noticed, so how many of you have downloaded both of these books? Downloaded, not read, just downloaded. I hope everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many of you have started to read them? There, these, these books, both of them, they work together as a team. On one hand, the Club Leadership Handbook is a description of the roles of each of the club executives and how, they ha how you work together as a team to create a successful club. And then the Distinguished Club Program are the details of how to uh, how to create, how to raise the standards so that you are creating this, this supportive and positive learning environment. So both of them go together. And uh, a lot of your questions are answered directly in these books. So I encourage you to, to read it. Uh, and, and if you can, get a paper copy as, because it is something you'll come back to very often and you'll want to highlight things too. And so you can print it out, uh, it's, it's available. Whoops, sorry, what happened there? So we go back to here. So mm -hmm. what is the Distinguished Club Program? This is the overall view of it. What it is, it is 10 goals, 10 results that if you are working together as a team, you should be able to achieve these 10 results at the end of the Toastmasters year. When does the Toastmasters year start? When does it end? Type it in the group chat. That's it. Yeah, it starts on July 1st, ends on June 30th. It doesn't end on the first week of May when somebody is elected in your place. No, your role goes all the way to June 30th. Right, Tanya? <laughs> really important to, so, so you have a full year here. Um, so if you are performing as a team, your club success plan, you should be able to hit those 10 goals. So let's go deeper into what these goals are. So first, there's six goals related to education. Point one is four level one awards achieved. Point two, two level two awards achieved. Point three, two more level twos. Point four, two level threes. Point five, and this is new, point five and six are new for this year. 
either one level four, level five, or DTM. And point six, one more level four, or level five, or DTM. So if you have a club with 20 members, normally you should be able to achieve most of these points. Something to remember here, really important, is that if, so the, for example, the four level one awards, if I achieve a level one and I give it, and I put it in the system, it, my first level one will count for the club. So let's say right now I'm working on effective coaching. I'm just about to submit my level one for Beyond Words. I want to also start engaging humor. If I do a level one engaging humor, I can put it in the system, but it will not count as a club goal for Beyond Words. So each person can only do one of these points per year. However, I can do a level two. So I can have a point for doing a level one, a level two, a level three, a level four, and a level five. And they can be in different paths, but I cannot get credit for the club goals for me doing two level ones. So that's important as you're planning to make sure that you have uh, that the that you have your your members are probably properly distributed. You can do a level one for one club and a different path in another club if you're a member for two clubs. That's not a problem. We're talking about making it count in the same club. So four level ones, two level twos, two more level twos, two level threes, a level four or five or DTM, and another level four or five or DTM. So within a club of about 20 members, you should be able to get almost all of these points. The next set of goals are about membership. So you get a point if you have four new dual or reinstated members, and you get a second point if you have four more new dual or reinstating members. If you have more than eight new members during the year, it, just, it will add to point number eight, but you don't get extra points for another four after that and another four after that. But an important thing to remember here is to qualify for the Distinguished Club program, your club must have 20 members on June 30th, or if you had 15 members or less, on the 1st of July at the beginning of the Toastmasters year that you have a net increase of at least five. So that's really important to, to, to recognize in your membership. And a transfer membership does not necessarily count right away as a new member. Yeah, that's so make sure that you read the, the, the instructions very closely if you have a tra transfer membership but make sure the goal here is that you have 20 members at the end of the year or a net growth of at least five new members. Now, 20 members is just the minimum. If you take into account that a typical club has about 50% turnover every year, you'd probably wanna have more than 20 members at the end of the year. And so that's part of what you will do in your club success plan is to plan out how you're going to go beyond 20. 20 is the minimum. You want to have more? That's great. I'm seeing here there was a question from the previous uh, question here. Uh, could you do a level one? And okay, if a member wishes to do two level one, they can, but it just means they won't get credit for both. That's exactly it. You do, you're not preventing a member from pursuing their educational goals, but it's just you as club leader that you are aware that just because somebody is doing two or three level ones, how that fits into how it's countered for the club. What is a dual member? Uh, Sid V is asking that. Is if you're a member of more than one club. So for actually, like for me, I'm a triple member. I'm a member of three clubs at the same time. Don't ask me why, but some people like that. <laughs> Okay, so we continue on. So point seven and eight, and then the and then 
when TI will change the goal from last year to July 2020, um, I believe it'll be near the end of this month uh, that you'll see. And I'll show you in a moment how you can see your, your points. And so uh, they're still counting the points from the previous year and closing the books on that. So we've talked about the first eight points of the Distinguished Club program. Point nine is about training and administration, club officer training. There are two, two training periods for the club officers each year. One at the beginning of your mandate, and so the training is somewhere between June and August. And then another training period between November and February, which is your mid-mandate training. At least four officers must attend one and the other. And the purpose of each training is different. So they're both very, very important. And then finally, number 10, on-time payment of membership dues for at least eight members for one period and the on-time submission of your club officer list. So the, these are two training and administration points that if you're doing your job, they, they're no brainers. You'll get the points. So as you can see, it is possible for a healthy club to get all 10 points. How is the training attendance tracked? The club eventually will, will be informed through the area directors. So the training of the officers is controlled and tracked at district level, and they will send a report to your area directors who will help you confirm that yes, you've been trained. You'll also see it near the end of the periods, like at the near the end of August and the end of February. Usually there's a big update, and so you'll be able to see it also on your um, uh, club report. Mary is asking, I'm doing an HPL that takes a year to complete. I've started another path. Would the club get credit for these projects or would they only be credited after completing my other path? So credits are done as you complete a level, no matter how many paths you have open. So as you finish a level and you submit the level to your VP Ed and the VP Ed okays it in base camp and also in Club Central, then the club gets the credit. So why are not all executives obliged to participate in the training? Of course, we want all the executives awesome. to participate in the training. Please do. And we really push for that. And it's great to see when we have seven out of seven participate. And the numbers are pretty good. We get four, five, six, and sevens um, pretty consistently. I don't remember from last year the numbers offhand. I know that Division F, we blew everybody else away when it came to officer training. So thank you very much. So I'm sort of proud about that, the clubs in Division F. So what happens at the end of the year, you can receive a beautiful ribbon to add to your banner, either a distinguished club, if you've gotten at least five out of the 10 goals, select distinguished seven out of the 10 goals, and presidents distinguish nine out of the 10 goal goals. And this is great to add to your club banner. This is what it looks like. So when you go on your Club Central, and hopefully everybody knows how to get to Club Central. If not, I'll stay on for a couple of minutes after the call just to make sure you know how to get to Club Central. But you'll see a button to see your Distinguished Club Report. And this is the one for Beyond Words. So you'll see here, it says what our membership is. And so this is as of the end of June. Um, the number of goals that were met. So we met 10 goals out of 10. So that gives us presidents distinguished. And as you can see, now what will change for this new year is that the, that the lines one to six no longer exist. So they, they have disappeared. Uh, so you'll have level one, level two, two level, um, two more level twos. I think it was what it was a le um, level threes, and then four or five or DTM, four or five or DTM. So these will change for the new year. And if you count, we have more than six points, but only six of these counted for the DCP credit. 
um, we got our new members and we got eight new members. So we got a total of 12, but we were only credited for four and four. And we had our four officers trained at the, in June and we had five officers trained in November. And then we made sure our reports were sent in on time. So if you're doing the job that you set out to do, if you're maintaining your standards, you will get your points. And this is a good point that Tanya said. Yes, what's our comment? Yeah, Tanya says a, uh, um, uh, is bringing a really good point. Don't use this to limit your, your, uh, your members. Your members should be encouraged to continue to move forward. This is more just to make sure that you're managing and, and that, yes, that you are advancing as a club. If you are not getting the two level twos and two more level twos, that's where you need to encourage some members to maybe reach, stretch for the, for the next level. What does this mean? So uh, these are the goals and now you wanna create a, a, a plan to achieve the goals and a framework to produce the results. So the the second part of this document, the club success plan, is a very, lots and lots of pages, lots and lots of blanks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how the club success plan is structured so that you'll understand the logic behind it. And that'll make it a lot easier for completing. So the first part of the club success plan is based on, it is focused for the club president. This is the part that you as a club president need to focus on. Who's on your team? What are the core values? How is your team going to operate? How's your executive team going to operate? What are some potential obstacles? It could be like one of the questions, the fact that we're a corporate club and we're not meeting at work anymore. Um, it, what about the, the times of it the, or um, the, um, the fact that some people are not available on other days? So all those obstacles, you need to be aware of it. How, do you, how are you going to meet with your club executive? Your frequency of meeting, are, are these online? Are these in person? Are these telephone? Are you going to have a, a Slack channel or something that you can communicate or are you going to use email? And then finally, the most important part, Describing how do you make decisions as a team? How do you communicate with each other? How will you resolve your differences of opinion? And it's important that you discuss this with your executive team now before you have disagreements because guaranteed you will have disagreements. And uh, a couple of years ago, when I was president of Beyond Words for the first time, we had a period of time where we had some disagreements within the club executive. And it was tough. It was really tough. And I have to admit, we did not do a good job. I did not do a good job of getting us to look at these, how do we resolve differences of opinion at the beginning of the session so that when when disagreements happen, then we can just say, okay, this is how we agreed to, to deal with if there's a deadlock in terms of recommendations. And a tough decision that many of you will have this year, do we go back into in-person meetings or do we stay as an online club? And guaranteed that's going to create a lot of discussion, a lot of emotion, a lot of disagreement. So have this discussion with your executive team as you write out this first part of the club success plan so that you can, that you can sort of imagine, okay, how are we going to deal? How are we going to negotiate? How are we going to come to decisions? How are we going to be accountable to each other? So the club president is responsible for this first part of the club success plan. Of course, you don't write it in a vacuum. Talk to your team, uh, get their input, send them a draft. Um, and, and integrate it. And it's a document you'll come back to over and over during your term as club president. So this is the first part of the club success plan. Personally, I think it's the hardest part, but it's the most valuable part because if you get this right, it makes all the other parts of the club success plan work much better. Questions about this first part? 
Okay, yes. Devendor, uh, this is Sabine. Yes. Uh, Club Hi. 835. Hi. So, how did you resolve, resolve the difference of uh, opinion? Because this is something very challenging usually in the executive team. The, we are both, we are, I mean, everyone is a um, high expectation and a strong uh, sense of leadership. So, it's like fighting each other instead of collaborating and everyone wants to raise their voice. So, how did you reserve difference of opinion? Um, one, of, uh, one of the mechanisms we decided to do was uh, m majority vote as a recommendation. So we had the discussion, it was a majority vote. Um, it, the vote did not go my way, but I accepted it. Mm -hmm. And we moved forward with it. And that was okay. And so the, uh, one of these things, uh, one of the points about resolving differences of opinion is that once a decision is made, however you decide, whether it's the president has the final say or majority vote or, or whatever, once the decision is made, then as an executive, when you present the recommendations to the club, the executive should be all on the same page. Mm -hmm. okay. So you need to have this discussion and, and test it, test it with a potential issue. Um, uh, what happens if somebody, uh, a, a new member is, is not allowed into the club and there's some people who really want this new member to be in the club, how are we going to resolve that? And mm -hmm. do some test scenarios and discuss it. Okay. And so as Roy is saying, yes, it's it, the difference of opinion should be designated in the meeting protocol and agreed upon the executives. And that's what this is, the team interactions and behavioral norms. It's to it's in the club success plan so that you discuss it as a as a team okay. on the executive. It's not easy. It's really important, but it's not easy. And sometimes this is where having the immediate past president as an observer and a mentor of the executive team can help also because they are, they don't have a vote, but they can step back and give feedback to the team mm -hmm. and be a kind of a mentor to the team. So, uh, so there are ways of doing this and, and that's part of the, that's part of the learning process. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good point, Sylvie. When avoid avoid emails uh, when when there's disagreements, <laughs> it's tough. And I've got and I got caught in that loop. That was part of the issue for me too. I got caught in the emails loop. And um, but when we decided to have a phone conversation, it helped to uh, to get everybody on the same page. The second part of the club success plan, really important, is the responsibility of the VP education. So as you're going to see for these next parts, there's a situation analysis and an action plan. So if I just going to go, I'm just going to go quickly and you'll see. So same thing for the part that's for VP membership, situation analysis, action plan. This, uh, for the training goals, situation analysis, action plan. So that's how they've set up the club success plan. The first part is okay, where are we right now? What got us to where we are right now? How do we see the goals moving forward? What are the obstacles? And in this case, this specific case is familiarity and how you're promoting the education system within the club. So you first understand the situation, then you can set your goals. And for the club success plan, it's broken down into three actions because yes, education is a big piece. So they've broken it down into three pieces. First, how are you going to get people to levels one and two? Second, how are you going to get your members to levels two and three? And third, how are you going to get your members to levels four, five, and DTM? So by breaking it down by actions and you look at what are the needs, what are the resources, what are the responsibilities, should I have a vice? vice uh, president education, should I have a VP mentorship, those kinds of decisions then you can put into your plan and you can create your education team within the club to help you execute the plan. The timetable, the tracking, all of those things are written down and you can refer to it because once it's written down, it, help, it makes the plan that much more solid. 
So VP education should be able to fill this out by getting the information from the members. Ask the members, what are your goals? Where, what are your objectives for this year? And keep track of those. Questions or comments about the VP education part? If a dual yeah. member receives their DTM stat, and I'll get back to you Sabin in a moment, mm -hmm. can it be recorded for both clubs? No, the DTM goes to just one club, Tarek. Sabin. Yes, what is the, the best way to, um, to get the uh, member motivation? Because going you know, one, one by one, or can we, for example, send a survey to the members and ask them what are their motivation, what are the, the challenges that they face with pathways, for example? Is, yeah, it, is it a good way to... There to... are so many ways. Uh, there are conversations, there are surveys. What we did in, uh, in um, Beyond Words is we sent a member survey, an educational goal survey to every member and new members mm -hmm. who come in. And, and we say that's to help us understand what your goals are and then we can help you mentor them. And okay. then the VP ed goes back to make to follow up and to close the loop. Yeah. Now, next part are a series of questions that tend to that are fo that are focused on the recruitment. So these are for points seven and eight. And the way I see it is, I encourage the VP membership and VP public relations to work as a team, because what the goal is is to attract visitors to the club which is the VPPR's role, and to convert those prospect to guests to members, so uh, which is the VP membership growth. So the, these two officers working together, again, situation analysis, what have been the tendencies? When can we expect a, uh, a, a surge in new memberships? Yeah. Um, yeah. What can we do exactly. to get new members? And then you create an action plan for your four, first four, and then your second four. So again, situation analysis, action plan. And the same thing for points nine, which is the, um, which is VP education and secretary working together. Why secretary? Because secretary will track the officer training and help the VP education that way. So situation analysis, making sure that the officers are going to the beginning of the mandate training and the mid-mandate training. And then finally, treasurer and secretary working together for role 10, making sure that the payments are on time and the club officer list is on time. Always going back to your situation analysis. So there's parts that can be delegated to the different members of the executive, and then you all come back together to, to make sure it's a whole and that everybody knows everybody else's roles. And of course, the SAA is not forgotten because the SAA has a lot of support roles. And so we'll work with everybody to make sure that, uh, that the infrastructure is that logistics are there to succeed. So that is what the club success plan is. When you think of it as, okay, for each part, there is, we, we set the, the um, situation and then we have our actions. And then if you see it that way, you'll start to see the logic in the club success plan. So it's really important to delegate and spread the work around and then you assemble it back because this is a document that the leadership team does together. What we're doing in, in Beyond Words, we're giving ourselves until Labor Day to put the plan together because we need to talk to members, we need to talk between ourselves. This is not something that you can just do in a week. It takes, it takes a few weeks to, to bring together. But once it's done, it's really powerful. And then you can share it with the membership. This is not just for the executive team. The club's success plan is for everybody. And you make the progress visible. Um, I love, I think it was um, Club Dynamic. They have a thermometer uh, that they put up in each of their meetings. And, they, and so you can see how, uh, how the club is progressing. And so keep that progress visible. 
those are two, those are the key issues to engage the leadership team and the members. Club elections, make sure that you have all your roles filled. Pay attention to the club ele election dates. If you have trouble refining people to complete your team, remind them of the Toastmasters province. So you as club president, if you ask somebody, they should say yes. And that's, that's your leadership um, assignment is uh, to, to, to find the people to complete your team. And I have that challenge in front of me at Beyond Words. We are two officers short, so I'm going to be making some phone calls in the next couple of weeks. Keep in touch with the members and make sure that uh, you update the membership often and they'll feel part of your team. They'll feel motivated. And finally, as I mentioned, pay attention to the part on resolving conflict. Before going to the questions and the discussion, I just want to remind you that success in business, but also success, we are a business. We are, we have a mission. We are creating value. We are delivering value. And that's the role of a business is to create and deliver value. So it's passion, but it's all about the execution. You can't let this just go just happen on its own. You need a plan and then you execute the plan. You adjust the plan as you're going as you're going along, of course, but you need the plan. And so you can focus on what you can control, let go of what you can't control, and then you work on the details. And that way what you're doing is you are raising the standard and you're creating this this red velvet rope that makes your club really, really special and people will line up to join you. And let's say the mission together again. Okay, ready? One, two, three. We, we burn like a supportive and positive learning, learning, learning experience. experience. Members are empowered members are are to develop world. communication world. and leadership, and leadership and skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and growth. Self -confidence and that's so something in greater self-confidence and personal and growth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so have that, have that, um, um, what I like doing in, in, in the clubs that I'm a member of is that that's actually one of the roles for new members who, who are, they just read the mission, the reading of the mission. And we don't do that often enough. We need to remind all the members while we're there. So, um, quick questions here. Debbie, yes, there's a calendar available on tmd61.com, and you'll go, you'll be able to find the latest calendar with all the important dates, and that's updated pretty often. The form for, for the success plan is in this book here, and it's available in French, and it's available in English, and the form is there. The online form is there. Uh, your uh, area director can also help you find it if you have trouble finding it. So I want to go to some of the questions. There's some really good questions. There's a lot of them. I'm going to stop sharing of this, and I'm going to share the questions and the handout are here that you see before me. So these are some of the questions. And so I'd like to just dis discuss uh, some of the questions here, and I'll be filling out some of the answers, and you're welcome to also fill out the answers. So the link that I've given all of you is an edit link. And, uh, and I'll also be sending this in the follow-up form. So what I'm hoping is that this document becomes a, uh, a, a resource for all club presidents. Of course, so the first group of questions, should this plan be done yearly? Yes. And go ask your previous president for the previous year's uh, club success plan. And if they didn't have one or they don't have one anymore, uh, go to the year before that and the year before that, or ask your area director if he knows of a club success plan that you can use. But definitely there's tons of examples, but if your club is, if your previous president did their work, they should have a version to you that you can use. And of course, to update it and to make it really your own. How can DCP help increasing membership? What's your view on this? What did I say in the, what did we talk about at the beginning? DCP helps raise the standards 
Mm. And by raising the standards, you make the club special. And by making the club special, people will line up the red velvet rope. Um, to stay on pace for cl distinguished club, what are the best in class doing? Uh, they are they are tracking their progress and they are sharing it with the members. And there's a question, there was, I believe there was a question. What happens if there are people who don't really believe in the DCP? Okay. <laughs> That's, don't let that bother you. Not everybody, the Distinguished Club program, the, the 10 points, if, if members don't believe in that, that's fine. They will come for their reasons. This is simply the metrics that you are using to make sure that, to ensure that you're creating a positive learning environment for your club. And I'm just about to be uh, with the setting sun here. I'm gonna just make a little adjustment because I'm fading. But yeah, what are the best in class doing? It is about planning, executing, measuring, and encouraging people to um, to remain involved, to remain engaged. What's the difference between uh, uh, Distinguished Club and the DCP? So the Distinguished Club program has those levels. Distinguished, Select Distinguished, President's Distinguished. Uh, is this, okay, completing the pro program. Is there a user-friendly format to use? I agree that the TM format is cumbersome. What I do is I open up a Word document and just type it into a Word document. That's what I recommend that you do because sometimes people will fill it out and then they forget to save it and there's changes and it just becomes a mess. Just do it in a Word document. Um, how can I best simplify this program? I hope that what you've seen by by the different areas and that there's a situation analysis and an action plan that you start to see the logic behind it. Uh, let me see here, description of, how can I best simplify this program to best engage the executives and the members alike? As president, our role is to remind the members of why they are there. So my recommendation to you is have members repeat the mission statement. Have them also go back and read out loud the Toastmasters promise. When was the last time that you as a president read the Toastmasters promise? I have to admit, as I'm saying this, I have, it has been a while for me. I have to go back and read it. But the, but the tools are there to inspire our members to remain engaged. And the Distinguished Club, Club program is simply a way, a, a structured way to make sure that we are on track. So I hope you have a better idea of, of what it takes to put together a club success plan. Give yourself a good six weeks as an executive to do this. Don't rush it. And it'll probably take two or three meetings. And in between the meetings, you are passing information. But if you put this into a Google Doc um, or a shared document, you'll find it, you'll find that um, it, it'll evolve. The mission statement, Danielle, is on the first page of your club leadership handbook. This is an important question. If you have only four people on the executive, do what you can. So focus on what you can control. Sometimes we want to have everything perfect. My recommendation is it won't be perfect. Focus on what you can control. I know that for my club, I've set some priorities, of which, of course, the educational, prior, the, the educational achievements are one of the priorities. But I have a couple of other priorities that are higher in terms of raising the standard within Beyond Words, improving the engagement uh, of the members, in, in the meetings and things like that. So I'm focusing on what I can control. Uh, best Mister. practice, yeah. Oh, I, you might've been getting to that actually. One of the questions on the chat was the best way to share the vision with the club. What's your recommendations on that? It's a great speech. It's a great five to seven minute speech. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and also the fact that they listen to you and give you feedback on your speech uh, will, uh, will, you'll be surprised. It's a great way to make sure that everybody remembers what you said. 
So in for most, for many of the uh, level ones, even the level two, the uh, leadership styles, there's some way that you could fit this into the leadership styles speech in level two. Um, you'll, you'll be surprised how you can fit it into any path almost at any level or just do a, uh, do a five to seven minute speech and bank it for a future, um, for a future path. Um, so here, um, how to organize a success plan for a corporate club in this pandemic time. And, uh, it's a, it's an interesting question because everybody's working from home now. So the, so I, so I recommend that you set up some zoom meetings. If you want to know more, talk to your area director, they are there to help you. Engagement of the club executive. What is the best way to ensure follow up on the plan by the club officers? And this is where you have your meetings once every six weeks, eight weeks, maybe more often, depending as uh, some clubs do it every month. Uh, but that's the best way. And at the end of every meeting, you set what are the, what's everybody's actions and they come back to the next meeting and report on their actions. So you are also responsible as a president to set the standard and focus on action. Um, member engagement. Uh, this is an important question, but I believe it's a little bit out of scope. We can I'll stay, we can stay online late after the meeting. Uh, how do you encourage all registered members to attend meetings regularly? Um, and that's part of that's part of setting the standards and controlling what you can control and letting go of what you can't. And um, and it's part of the change management. And I and this would be a great topic, I think, either for the VP Ed or club presidents um, training. I see Tanya making some notes. What's the best way to motivate members to keep advancing is encouragement, recognition, uh, is, is, and transparency, showing the progress that everybody is making. You, so you create this wave. And uh, those are the main questions. As I mentioned, uh, I encourage I encourage you as club officers, as club presidents, to write down some of your answers for these questions. I will add some of mine, and this becomes a shared document of uh, that we can refer to for the club success plan. Tapender, a question came up, and it, it's an important one because I think yeah. a lot of members are probably discussing it, and as they work through their success plan, I think it's going to be prevalent. And the question itself is about online meetings, and will we be permitted to continue having online meetings for the duration of Everness? Um, and so I'm going to share the official answer on that uh, with you, and the official answer is we need to wait for the direction of TI. And what that means is Toastmasters International is getting in the process of voting in a new board of directors, just like we vote in a new officer each year. They vote in new board of directors and their vote takes place in August. At that time, they're going to have a new board and that new board is going to then be tasked with the decision of how do we integrate in-person and online meetings and how do we embrace the skills we've been learning and keep growing it. So those questions are going to be answered in the fall. So I just ask, you know, it, it is a hot topic. People are asking that question. Just be patient. TI is working on it and they will have some information for us in the fall, okay? And I recommend as a club president that you have contingency plans. Uh, the ideal plan and also backup plan. What happens if you're not able to go to your current location or your current location closes? So you have to think of these different contingencies. And so uh, it's, it, it's, it's important, it's important. Um, Sue sent me a quick m message about the uh, past presidents and vote. I just wanna check this here. Um, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. The past president does have a vote on the club executive. 
so the quorum is a majority of the club executive committee, which would include the past president. Thank you very much, Sue, for clearing that up. That's my mistake. So yes, and that makes it just as important to include your past club president in your meetings, in your discussions, in the creation of your club success plan. I encourage. Yes. I got yes. a question. Go ahead. So yeah, in at our current club, uh, the issue we're running into is low attendance, which other people have commented on. Um, and my concern is that um, trying to dive into and implement a club success plan at this time might actually make things worse rather than better. Uh, is that possible? Uh, and and that's why I say, Ricky. That's why I mentioned, take your time in putting the plan together. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience for Montreal clubs and Quebec City clubs, the time to move into execution is September. Okay. Take these weeks to sort of see what the situation is, have discussions. Um, I know that at, uh, at Beyond Words, uh, one of the things we're talking about is having actually uh, an op um, a town hall meeting of all the members. Mm -hmm. Once the plan, once the club success plan is, is starts to take shape. And so we're not going to, we don't want to impose this on the club. This is to help us in making decisions so we can guide the club. So take your time. This is, and, uh, and remember what the goal is here. We want to create a positive and supportive learning environment. So, and like Tanya says, it's a working document. If we should go back to it, um, it's, it's, it's something that's going to evolve during the whole year. So it's not something that you just drop on the club and say, here it is. Good point, Ricky. So I encourage all of you here today and those of you who are listening on the on the recording to uh, uh, to contribute to the this um, FEQ. If you have other questions you want to add or answers that you want to respond to, because there are some presidents here that have a lot of experience, there's some new people also, and we can use this as a living document to share ideas. And several of these questions will help guide future club president calls. Our plan is starting September that we have one call a month on different days of the week so that depending, so it doesn't interfere with your club meetings. And uh, they are forums for all of us to share ideas, best practices, to discuss issues, and uh, to, uh, to definitely uh, make all our clubs better. And so, and the, this FAQ document that I shared with, uh, that I'm sharing with you, these are all the questions that you have submitted. So, and this will be an open document for, that you can all ref refer to. So by pooling our ideas together as club presidents, I think we can all help each other make our clubs much more successful at achieving the mission. And if we go back to what is the mission, what is the mission statement? It's about creating a supportive and positive learning environment. And in yes. your experience, what have you learned about the club's education committee that you can guide uh, this team with? Because education is a huge part of, you know, leading the club. So what does that look like in your world? In the clubs I've been uh, a member of, we've never really had an education committee. So that's something that's new. I have not heard of that before. Is that, do you mean a group of people who work with the VP education? Yeah, so I know, I'll, I'll share my experience. Yeah, but it, it, it's new, that up. new to me. Um, so, you know, I've been to some clubs where they have a team that does work with the VP of education. And then that team outlines kind of like what the themes of the meeting are going to be each week. They outline, you know, you want to schedule so many workshops from the Leadership Excellence Series and the Better Speaker Series. So you want to make sure those are kind of, I'm going to use the word littered throughout your year agenda so that you've got those in place. And so the Education Committee kind of looks at, works with the VP of Education 
on the whole overall prospect of what that year works with. And they really come into line with the, the president as well. And where you see that affecting the club success plan is when it starts to say, well, what are your educational goals? You mm -hmm. already have an idea of that because it was part of the educational committee that says, okay, we're going to do these workshops. We're going to make sure that everybody's getting a speaking spot. So that education committee works tightly with the VP of education, but it feeds right into the club success plan. That's a great point. Like what Nancy is saying, and VP Ed was so big and uh, that, it, that the only way to do it effectively is with the team. And that's why in the club success plan also, there is that part, you know, who, what are the responsibilities? What are you delegating to who and how are you coordinating this? It's in the document. That's a great idea. I'm going to, I'm going to take that. Yeah. The other thing that uh, I've seen clubs successfully do is they ask the secretary of the club to actually take ownership of the agenda. So now the VP of education can really focus on the members and their goals and onboarding on pathways. Mm. Uh, you've got the educational team that is working on making sure those speeches are, are coming together, but then the secretary is taking care of the agenda. So it's always full. So it starts to, I'm gonna use a word that nobody says is a word, but I'm sure it is. It's gonna to start to dissipate that workload of the VP of Education um, and start to put that in a, this, can you spell that <laughs> I can spell it I use it often and every time somebody says that's not a word Tanya it's a word in my dictionary my club I know had an agenda master they weren't even on the executive that was their special role to do the agenda every week and it seemed to work really well Great idea, great idea. I'm sure Gabrielle is taking notes for Beyond Words. <laughs> At the Bank of Canada, we also have a senior leadership uh, program that we ask because it's a corporate club. So the mm -hmm. VP Education uh, Committee, subcommittee, they're asking our higher level um, director and up to come in and do a speech on how it was and what did they learn about their experience in uh, that ma management. That's another program that we keep putting together. Yeah, and it, and it goes back to the idea that it, like, it's not all on the shoulders of one or two people. In a, in a club that, in a club that is, that is healthy, everybody finds a role to contribute to the success of the club. And that's the, and going back to why we're here tonight, those are the kinds of visions that you can put in your club success plan and discuss it and get buy-in from those people who want to participate. Some won't, that's fine. Some will, that's great. 